And so the behavior of Sodom was not homosexual sexual conduct. It was the same identical conduct that the children of Israel engaged in after they had created the golden calf. Now notice... In the book of Exodus, we find that God speaks to Moses and says, Moses, look what your people are doing down there. They've created a golden calf. Look at their conduct. They've, they're, they're having a big old orgy in honor of this false god. And what did God say to Moses? He said, I will destroy every one of them, and I will preserve you and your family, and out of your seed, I will cause the nation of Israel to be resurrected. So God was prepared to visit upon Israel the same identical destruction that he had slated for Sodom. And he was prepared to visit the same destruction on them for the same identical reasons, my friend. Idolatry that resulted in some hideous, horrible sexual conduct associated with the worship of false gods. Now, so you see, there, there's so much misunderstanding and misinterpretation relative to this that it's not even funny. Look at Exodus chapter 12 and verse 37, and you'll see what I'm talking about relative to the people of Israel. How many people in Scripture do we understand that Jesus fed with five loaves and two fishes? I'm going to throw you a little curveball here. How many people did the Lord feed with five loaves and two fishes? Well, one of the first answers people are going to shout out is 5,000. He fed 5,000 people. No, he didn't feed 5,000 people. The word of the Lord tells us in Luke chapter 9, verse 14, that in fact there were 5,000 men. And then almost as if it were an afterthought, the phrase is thrown in, plus women and children. You see, the Hebrew people and the Hebrew faith is a... Uh, a very male-oriented faith. And what happens is whenever uh, something was mentioned, whenever something was written about uh, that involved a great number of people, it was a very, very common practice to speak of the men. How many men? That doesn't mean that there weren't women involved. That doesn't mean there weren't children involved. But that rather than count the entire audience, the entire crowd, all of the participants, as it were, what they would do is, it's a very patriarchal society, they would count the men. And then the women and children were kind of an afterthought, because in that day, the women and children were, in effect, the property of the men. So therefore, in the telling of the tale uh, in the Old Testament of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's not altogether unusual that they would speak of the men, even though there were more than just merely men involved in the activity. Because the language of the Old Testament uh, is very patriarchal. And that patriarchal nature, that patriarchal uh, form, uh, was carried right into the New Testament church. You know, you read the teachings of the Apostle Paul, and he very much had that, that uh, patriarchal uh, belief system as part of his being. It was very much a part of him. So you see, when we read in the story of Sodom, you know, all these men, these men, the people, we need to understand today that we're not merely speaking of males, we are speaking of the people of the city, old and young, um, rich and poor, male and female. All the people of the city came to the door of Lot's house and sought the visitors, desired that the visitors would come out. Now there's an extremely important truth in verse number 5 as well. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. 
The greatest controversy surrounding this biblical account involves the use of the phrase that we may know, K-N-O-W, know them. Many uneducated preachers are quick to point out that the use of the term know in many biblical passages implies sexual intercourse. For instance, in the New Testament, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is said not to have known Joseph until after the baby Jesus was born. Now, obviously, he knew her. They traveled to Bethlehem together. They knew one another. But this term is used in the uh, translation, the King James translation. This is an old English uh way of saying that they did not have sexual contact or sexual intercourse, uh, and they would use the term did not know. Uh, that's where we get a, a vulgar term in our language today uh, involving sexuality that speaks of uh, foreign and unlawful carnal knowledge is the last word in that uh, phrase, okay? Uh, no often implies sexual activity. It implies sexual intercourse or physical sexual uh, connection and contact. However, uh, this is very much true in speaking of chaste Mary, who remained chaste and who remained a virgin, uh, up until the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, or until the conception, anyway, of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, in the passage that we are today investigating, the truth of the matter is that the term used here in the Hebrew is not the same as the term used to imply sexual intercourse but rather it is a term that speaks of, listen carefully, it speaks of, a, it does have a sexual connotation. However, its sexual connotation is differently applied and understood than intercourse. You say, well, what do you mean by that? The term that is used in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, that we may know them, literally translates and speaks of, quote, to ascertain by seeing. So yes, there is a sexual element here. But in this instance, it is a sexual element that is not married to the notion of physical contact or sexual contact, but rather it is married to the notion of uh, sexual uh, arousal related to vision, related to seeing. In other words, we have a, an industry in America today that rakes in billions of dollars a year billions of dollars a year. Many, many people are addicted to this industry and the products created by this industry. And that industry is what we refer to as porn or pornography. Now, pornography is what? Is pornography sexual contact? Does pornography involve uh, an individual's physically touching and having sexual intercourse with uh, the parties that they are viewing? No. Pornography is based on the notion of sexual arousal by reason of seeing. You are aroused sexually through your sight. What the people of Sodom were wanting to do, they obviously found these angelic men to be very, very beautiful and attractive. And what they wanted to do was the same thing that happens every night in nightclubs all across the world, they wanted to have these men come out stripped of their clothing so that they could do what they were going to do, but use these men as visual stimuli for their sexual desires. Some people say, well, that's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. There are people every day that go to bars and nightclubs and strip clubs so that they can be aroused by flesh and blood forms, human beings, 
who are conducting themselves uh, in, in the nude in such a way as to arouse them sexually. They never have contact with that individual. They do not engage in sexual intercourse with that individual, but they utilize that individual through their sight to arouse themselves sexually.